Today, you will learn six things every pilot must know about fuel planning, regardless if you were to plan for a VFR or an IFR flight. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and giving this video a like should you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's learn something. Fuel planning is one of your most important jobs, so here are some tips you should never forget as a pilot. Number one, avoid planning alternate fuel by simply using in route time and distance. You need enough fuel to go from your departure airport to your destination and then to your alternate, and thereafter for 30 minutes or 45 minutes at normal cruising depending on your local regulations. Remember that you should add time for your climb as well as an approach at your alternate. If you don't, you could find yourself in a very uncomfortable situation and having to declare a fuel emergency. A side note here, do you know what's the difference between minimal fuel and mayday fuel? Well, if you do, please leave your answer in the comment section below. Number two, holding. How much time do you have? Whether it's unexpected traffic delays, deteriorating weather conditions at your destination, or even troubleshooting an abnormal situation, holding can have a major impact on the rest of your flight. As soon as you enter holding, make a plan for how long you can hold and still make it safely to your destination. It's always better to start your diversion early than to sit in holding and get long fuel. And here where that EFC or expect further clearance you get from ETC is important. Before you take off, consider adding some extra fuel dedicated for holding, especially if you will be flying into a busy airport or with poor weather conditions ahead. The last thing you want is to plan your fuel load so perfectly that you don't have enough to hold, when any delay might cause you to make an intermediate diversion, for example. Speaking of diversion, I have made a video about how to prepare and plan for a diversion with an excellent life-changing technique that I will guarantee you will thank me for it later. Click the link right here or check the description below. Number three, call ahead. If you are flying into an unfamiliar airport or for the first time, especially one without an FBO, make sure to call the airport about fuel availability before you take off. You don't want to land at an airport without fuel or a broken pump, finding yourself stuck there. So remember to always plan ahead. Number four, once you take off, you don't need to go to your fired alternate. The legal purpose for finding an IFR alternate airport is based around fuel on board, to make sure you can make it to another airport and land if you can break out of clouds, for example, at your destination. Once you are in the air, you can divert anywhere you need to, regardless of what you filed. So remember that your diversion planning must always include enough fuel to land with the reserves on board, so-called the final reserve. Number five, pay attention to winds aloft. Winds and loft forecasts have gotten very good, but that doesn't mean they are always perfect. When you get to your cruise altitude, always check the actual ground speed versus your planned ground speed. If you are significantly slower than planned, pick an early fuel stop in case the winds continue to stay above forecast conditions. This is especially relevant for flying across frontal systems, which where winds might change dramatically within just a few miles. Number six, Legal minimums do not equal personal minimums. Just because your fuel load is legal doesn't mean you have to accept the minimum. Always plan for an unexpected and try to carry an extra buffer when you can. There is nothing more useless in the sky than fuel left on the ground. Here is my personal fuel planning calculation that you can use too. First of all, of course, start up in taxi. En route, from your departure airdrome to your destination, contingency, which is 5% of the en route fuel, and then your alternate from destination to alternate, of course. And then we have the final reserve, which we have to land with, uh, which is 30 minutes or 45 minutes, depending on your local authority regulations again. And then we have extra. This extra caters for unexpected winds aloft change, holdings or unexpected holdings, approach and go rounds, delay vectors, and so on. Another thing to keep in mind, guys, is that when you're using or when you're calculating the in route fuel, say for example your Diamond DA40 burns 5.1 US gallons per hour, make your calculations based on 5.2 or 5.3. And whatever value you get, round it up. This way, you will always be on the safe side. Okay? Alright, gentlemen, that's all I have for you today. If you have found this video helpful, kindly leave a comment and smash that like button. And as usual, thanks for watching and happy landings.